Good afternoon for TriCal TV. It's Friday afternoon, the 26th annual Avia Wildflower Triathlon Festivals. This gentleman beside me has been racing back in the States about 10 years, came to us at TriCal, I think in 98, escaped from Alcatraz. He's been here three times. Each time, he's won here. His fourth time here, he's back. Last October in Kona, I said to him, Maka, have a great day. Dixie and the whole crew from TriCal wish you the best on Saturday. He said he wants to get the monkey off his back. Have a good day on Saturday in Kona. He did win. He won the Ford Ironman World Championship in Kona last year. He said, true to his word, he wanted to come back to Wildflower because it's so much fun. Maka, welcome back. Congratulations on all the success. You brought your family back here this year as well. How's things going? Lots changed in 10 years, eh? I've got yeah. kids now and uh, Ironman World Champion, but it's it's good to be back here. It's, uh, it's back to my roots. So it's my first ever half Ironman race was here in Wildflower in 2001, and now I just cannot believe how quick the last seven years have gone. It's uh, 2008 already, but it's, it's great to be back here. The, the event is as wonderful as ever, and it's just... Uh, it's going to be difficult, but I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, tell us just your favorite wildflower just moment in uh, the three years you've raced. I think that coming here for the first time, I'd read about this event as an Australian back home in the magazines, pre-internet days, and uh, used to wait every month for the magazines. And uh, there was a, a great shot of uh, Greg Welsh and Christian Bustos, and uh, so many of the stars I looked up to as a kid. And, and I think I had this this vision in my head of, of what Wildflower would be like. And when I first came into the into the park here in, in 2001, it was bigger than I ever imagined. And uh, I think crossing the line, being so close to breaking four hours to be the first man under, it's been done now twice by Lessing and, and Terenzo. But I was so close, and, uh, and uh, just crossing the line and being the Wildflower champion is probably the, you know, my first title here was, it was the best memory I've ever had here. Good morning and welcome to the 26th annual Avia Wildflower Triathlon Festival. It is Saturday morning, May 3rd, just a little after 7 a.m. A lot of electricity in the transition area. We're going to have a great race. The men's field and women's field stacked. Unbelievable. 7,500 athletes over the next two days, 3,000 today. It's going to be a great day. So welcome. It is the Wildflower presented by Avia. All right, we are underway. The men's course, long course, the Avia 26th annual, $20,000 on the line, 200 for the swim preem, brought to you by Two Times You. The men's elite race, the professionals, underway. Twenty-one forty-nine, the course record, not going to be broken today. Twenty-two twenty-four, Terenzo Pizzone. Second place, Frazier Cardinal. All right, they're coming out in a pack right now. Hector Lanos, Luke McKenzie, Stephen Sexton, Brad Brandon, Bjorn Anderson. Out of the water, right behind our pack, the great Macca, Macca McCormick.
We have our first men's elite in transition right now. Reports have it. It is Bjorn Anderson. Bjorn Anderson ran a road at 2.15 last year here. Today, we're not sure of his bike split, but we'll find out as soon as we know. But this man, he is a bicycle powerhouse. Number 22 here today, Enrico Lanos from Espana. He and his brothers are here. So they're having a great time here in the States. Aka right now, four minutes and 55 seconds down on Bjorn Anderson. So there's a five minute gap in between Bjorn Anderson, our leader off the bike, and Chris Macca McCormick, the defending world champion in double the distance of this race. bringing it like only he can, Chris Maka McCormick. He won in Hawaii here before, unbelievable. He has done it, he has done it once again. Chris Maka McCormick, our 2008 Avia Wildflower Champion, bringing it like only he can. Maka, welcome back -a Maka. Yeah, four hours. 43 seconds. All right, in second place, his first time here at Wildflower, number 22, Inico Solanos from Espana. Great job. You've been here three times before. Your fourth time, you're back. Every time you're here, you win, buddy. How was it out there today? I forgot how hard it was. I, uh... I struggled in the swim and then Chris Liado gave me a cold when he went past me. He was going so fast. I was like, oh man, I'm getting old. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, this course is all, all starts at 40 miles on the bike. That last section of the hills is just brutal. And uh, we picked up a couple of guys and, uh, you know, I just felt good on the run. But you never know. And Nico's such a top runner. He was sixth in Kona or eighth. And uh, I've raced him so many times. And he caught me. I thought, oh great, this is all I need. And uh, I tried to bluff him a little bit. Four titles, wow, stoked. All right, as we can see right there at mile nine, Chris Lieto's hitting the asphalt, coming off the dusty path. You're right behind him. Walk us through what's going on there right now, going in second place right behind Chris Lieto. Well, I knew we were gonna catch him. We'd been running a lot of time out of him and I was more concerned of what was going on behind me. At that point, Chris was right in front of me and uh, one of the guys on the side of the road said, you've got about 100 yards on, on um, Lanos, who I know very, very well. And I thought, oh, here we go. So it's a downhill to the 10 mile mark turnaround. So I thought, let's, let's wait for this guy. Let's relax and um, let's see how he feels, see how he looks. So you moved into first place past Chris Lieto and then you waited for Lanos to come at you. And here he is, walk us through that. He got up onto me and um, we sort of felt him out a little bit. We did a few surges and he, he looked um, pretty sprightly. I'd passed him earlier in the run and I knew he was um, struggling on the climbs a little bit. He pushed the bike very, very hard today and I thought, okay, I know this finish. It's a one mile downhill finish. Um, downhill running's difficult if you've got sore legs. So I'm just going to um, 
I've got to try and get him in, in a position in front of me. He was keen to run off my shoulder or next to me, so I really wanted to put him um, in front of me. So I, I, I made a little bit of a surge, I think, coming up here and um, hoping he would counter that, which he did. And um, that put him in front of me, and I was able to, um, to sit off the back of him, which was exactly where I wanted to be. Here's the surge I, I do now, just a bit of a test. And then I, I sort of pull to the right of the road, hoping that he'd counter that surge, thinking this was a move I was going to make on the, for the run for home. Um, when it wasn't, I was, I was totally prepared to wait for the downhill. That was that was the plan to try and run away from him. So I pulled to the, to the right a little bit and he counters counters the surge and goes past me, which is exactly where I wanted him to be. Traditionally at this distance, we haven't seen too many shoulder to shoulder running at mile 12 like we're looking at the footage. This is almost like back in 1989 with Alan and Scott going back and forth like this. You were, with your experience, ready to just hammer on the downhill? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, the... The key of downhill running is to get that surprise because once you're in full flight, it's very, very difficult to get the legs turning. So I, I knew if I was behind him, I could see what he's doing at all times. And um, if I wanted to make a move, I'd get that element of surprise. So um, we're, we're cresting the hill. I thought, this is perfect. He's going to have to try and drop me here. And I was feeling quite good. And I said, once we get to that downhill, I'm, I'm ready. To... I've got the, the balls in my court. I'm the person who can, um, who can dictate the, the run at home. And uh, I wanted him to wonder what I was doing and uh, he's got no idea what I'm doing now I'm sitting off him out of his right behind him so he can't see my shadow or anything and uh, I just want him to wonder what was happening back there so it was uh, he did exactly what I wanted to do which was great I was very very happy about that and um, he's a very 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 good athlete it's, it's good to see him in America I've known a Nico since my World Cup days him and his brother are very very strong um, you know they're stellar runners they're good and it's hot they're going to be big contenders in, in Kona over the next few years and He's a very, very strong runner, but I knew he doesn't have, um, he's not a fast runner, he's just a strong, strong guy, and that's why I was um, content on, on waiting for this downhill. Being this was his first time at Wildflower, did you think that uh, his inexperience might uh, have him blow up or maybe pull ahead too fast? What were you thinking there? I was thinking we're close to the finish line now, anyone can guts at home from here, but I, I didn't know how much he knew about this downhill finish, and uh, I kept telling myself he'd have to be worried about me if I was in his shoes. I'm the guy who's run the quickest times and, and he's worrying about me and this is uh, approaching the downhill now. Yeah, this is where we really see Maka pull away from the Spaniard. Tell us about what's going on here, your commitment on the downhill. Well, it's a mile from the top to the bottom and I, I was like, it's a long way and I, 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 I thought to myself, once I make my move, that's my move. If he comes back at me, then then he's going to get me. This is Once you make a move, be committed. And I said, forget your toes, forget your knees, forget your hips. This, and this is, is what you were thinking right here. Right here, this, this is point. for the win. Just let the legs go as much as you can, and once you go, just go. And uh, I made the move past him, and I was like, OK. I saw him out of the corner of my eye start to drop off, and I went, this is it. Open up, forget technique, forget everything. Just let the big body roll down the hill. With your two decades of multi-sport racing, is there any other race course that has such a tremendous downhill on the last mile? No, this is, this is the toughest. It's funny, downhill finishes are tough in a, in a half Ironman because the legs are sore um, and y your feet are fatigued and your foot slides a lot from the sweat and the water in your shoes, so it really works off your toes and um, it's tough. And right tough. now, look at you. You're just putting the hammer down. You're in the red zone. You're in fifth gear. It's, <laughs> I'm just sitting there thinking, oh, man, I hope he's not coming up on me. I don't know where he is. This is I'm committed to the finish now. This is the, this is the move. If he, um, if he came up on me here, I didn't have much left that was I was at full pelt doesn't um, you know and I was wondering where he was I think I asked uh, one of the people coming down the road how far back is he and they said about six seconds I was like huh just keep committed and I knew it was flat at the end and it's very very difficult people have run downhill when you, you've got the leg turnover like that when you hit the flat section you can tend to bog a little yeah you bog a little bit so I was like okay prepare yourself for the flat section and pump the arms and you still got a sprint in you even though you're an Ironman guy now just believe you can sprint so I um, this was my run for home I've, I've won this I've never lost here and I came here determined to to keep that winning record intact it's a beautiful event as I said I've uh, it's my favorite race and half Ironman distance around the world and it's just I was like man you've won here you know what you do let's let's get the fourth title and now we can see from the video there's definitely at least a hundred yards in between the two and yet you still didn't know where he was I had no idea. I had no idea where he was. I think that's Chucky V right there. He said, <laughs> he said, yeah, Mackie, you got about 12 seconds and he's going back. I was like, oh, you beauty. But 
you know, I didn't know whether he was going to hit the flat section or I was going to bog down a bit and he sure. was going to have a run at me on the... Because you still got a cu about a quarter mile from the flat section to the finish. And um, I had no idea how far back he was. So I just said, concentrate on getting to this flat section, keep the arms pumping. And uh, and then I had a, look, had a glance over when I sort of came into the thing and I knew I had it won. And I was like, oh, you beauty. Beautiful. <laughs> it is a long downhill. And now you're hitting that point where the leg turnover stops just because of the descent, uh, the angle is not as dra dramatic. dramatic and you're hitting those flats for the legs and really feel what you've just done on the downhill. It's really nice too, you come around the corner and, and the music's playing, you know, you guys are yelling out on the, on the microphone and it's home, you know, you're like, okay, there's 300 metres to go, let's get the job done into that. Once you get into, the, into that stadium, I guess, the, that finish shoot, it's um, difficult to catch it, so I was just pumping the arms as much as I could. I said, get to that Gatorade bottle and uh, swing around and look over your shoulder then. And I, uh, is that when you look back? You have a glance just as I come around the corner here and um, knew I had it so I was able to celebrate a little bit down the finish shoot and uh, enjoy my fourth win at Wildflower. Great. Well great, Chris McCormack, thank you so much for spending the time with us walking us through your experience in the last few miles of today's 26th annual Avia Wildflower Triathlon. Great job buddy. Jack McCormack, our 2008 Avia Wildflower champion, bringing it like only he can. Maka, welcome, Baka, Maka.